as we're getting ready to try to offer something to the next general government. So what I'll do is uh, briefly review this and then open it up for your recommendations or questions or suggestions that should be part of a province plan for specializations and sabbaticals. So in starting, just want to go through and clarify some of the terms that we use. So first is ongoing formation. Ongoing formation refers to something that we should all be doing and we should all have a plan for ongoing formation. It makes up a bulk of what is normally our personal plan. How are we keeping updated? How are we caring for ourselves ministerially, intellectually? And so that's something that all of us should have. It should be a part of our lives. We have a personal, ongoing um, formation plan. Again, it usually makes up the majority of our personal plan, although there's other things in a personal plan like exercise and recreation, that kind of thing. And then we have sabbaticals. So a sabbatical is a formal, structured period where we step out of full-time ministry for personal renewal, um, spiritual renewal, ministerial renewal, intellectual study renewal. A sabbatical, a normal sabbatical, we consider six months. An extended sabbatical is anywhere from seven months to a year. And so um, there's information again in the plan about the sabbaticals. After 10 years in full-time ministry, you can request a sabbatical. Um, after another 10 min years in ministry, you can request another sabbatical. The request is not permission. No one has an automatic right to have a sabbatical when they want to have their sabbatical. That's always you know, a request. Part of putting this together is that we can have a plan years out so that we can know in three years, Rohan is going to take a sabbatical. In two years, in the second half of the year, John Molino will have his sabbatical. And so we can plan around that. You know, it makes it much better to project into the future and to plan around that. There are also treatment and assessment programs. Sometimes in our lives we might experience some element of, of burnout, of breakdown. There might be concerns about developing addictions. There might be some kinds of personal psychological or vocational crises where a person needs to step out of ministry they might see that for themselves or the people they're working with. Their local community might see that and say, hey, something needs to be addressed. If we are experiencing that type of need, we should not postpone that request. So we shouldn't, if we're experiencing a real crisis of some kind, we shouldn't say, well, I'm gonna ask if I can take a sabbatical the second part of next year. A sabbatical is something different. If any of us is in need, if any of us is in crisis, we should ask for that. We want to address it immediately. We want to help each other and care for each other. Then there is a leave of absence. A leave of absence is a request to live outside of one of our communities for a period of time. A local provincial can give permission for up to a year we have examples of people needing to do that. For example, Art caring for his mother, or sometimes people re will request it for vocation discernment. They, maybe they're thinking about becoming a diocesan priest. They want a certain time out. A leave of absence doesn't excuse someone for the obligations of religious life. And sometimes people on a leave are engaged in full-time ministry, and sometimes they're not. So a leave of absence is not a sabbatical. Um, it's not a treatment and assessment program. And we did, I had this recent conversation with Andrew Eswa. When I was talking with Andrew initially, he was asking for a sabbatical. And then the more we talked, it was like, you're not really asking for a sabbatical, you're asking for a leave of absence. And so kind of clarifying those terms. And then there are specializations. And so a specialization is when a person is developing some knowledge or expertise 
in a certain area that is valuable for the congregation or for the province. Normally, specializations come through a graduate degree, getting a, a D-min, getting a PhD, getting an STL, so, some of these other degrees. But I'm going to go into a little bit of how that doesn't have to be the only option. It's not just formal academic degrees. Are there any questions? Oh, another thing I wanted to mention that our technology folks were requesting is because we are live streaming our presentations, if you have a question, it helps if you ask them from one of the microphones. We have two microphones there. That way your question is heard by the people who are at home participating. Any, any questions for clarifications on these? Okay. So uh, specialization, as I said, it can be an advanced degree. In this, in this little province proposed plan, there's a form that you can fill out to request permission to pursue an advanced degree. As with the sabbaticals, so with the advanced degrees, we want to have a plan projecting years into the future, not just on an ad hoc basis from year to year, but we can say three years from now, Steve Niskanen is going to start a PhD program in spirituality. Okay, so we're projecting that out into the future. So it can be an advanced degree. There are some recommendations from, uh, from Father General, from Matthew. He wrote, um, there's, some of them are summarized in here concerning specializations that are degree programs. And so these specializations are to improve the congregation's ability to respond to certain needs. He writes, the most important thing is to be clear about the purpose of the specialization. It should always be for the good of the mission of the congregation. Those selected for advanced degrees must be selected carefully so that we do not have members with decorative academic degrees that were pursued as a way of seeking prestige and self-importance or a boost for self-esteem. Along those lines, he offers guidelines that should be looked at when selecting the people to do advanced graduate study. It should be responding to a missionary need of the congregation the person should have the intellectual vocation and ability to pursue those studies. Matthew, from the perspective of the global congregation, says that we should select someone whose age is suited for a significant contribution then after the degree is finished. His general rule is that you should be below 40 years old if you're doing like doctoral studies, that there are exceptions for that and in our province, I don't know if anybody is, any of us are under 40 at this point, but there are, there are a few. So we would have to look at our own context. It also should be a person of, of personal integrity who demonstrates a love for the congregation, a spiritual and human maturity to benefit from the study and view of our mission, and has someone, is someone who's demonstrated missionary availability. So in selecting doctoral studies, on the, again, on the negative side, there, it, it, doctoral studies, advanced studies, shouldn't be for that person that you don't know what to do with. You know, it should be the person who has a demonstrated commitment to availability. They're on committees. They come to assemblies and retreats. You know, they're very active in the life. And then you're, you're putting that person at a at a service to the congregation that way. But. It's not just advanced degrees, and this is another way I would like to propose us to think about this, is there are people in the province who have the ability and can make the contribution who are not interested in research and all that's involved in those degrees, but might do something on behalf of the province of committing to being part of a certificate program. Okay? I don't want to teach at the university. I don't want to teach at a graduate school but I would like to get this certificate in spiritual direction. 
I would like to get this certificate in Hispanic ministry or in liturgy and bring that information, bring those skills, bring what I've accumulated, and, and give that to service of the province. And so we would like to have a plan for looking at the certificate of programs that are available and who would be interested in that and, and, and uh, look at that option. Another one, less intensive even than a certificate program, are workshops and conferences. So not even as formal as a certificate, but someone saying, every year I want to attend this particular workshop on rural ministry. There are many different organizations in the Catholic Church for youth ministry, for campus ministry, for music ministry. And someone might say, you know, I would like to do that. I'll, I'll attend that workshop every year, and I will bring that, what I learned, back to the, to the province to benefit the province and congregation. There could be some kind of apprenticeship or internship. This might be in an area like grant writing that we find our own Claritian Lord Winner or someone else who's a skilled grant writer and someone is going to work with them over a period of time to learn how to write grants. Um, or it could be in an artistic field like, you know, Brother Manolo, I'm going to go and I'm going to intern with this particular artist in order to learn some technique or, or something like that. And then lastly, I don't want us to minimize what could be a very valuable contribution to the province is just personal independent study. Someone might want to read on a certain area. We have a number of things that are available on YouTube, Coursera and other organizations where someone's just going to take a personalized independent study program but learn some valuable skill. For example, it, it would take some time commitment but there's all kinds of training online for using Zoom and all the features of Zoom that most of us are not aware of. There's lots of things in Zoom that can be done. It would be great if someone in the province said, hey, you know what, to benefit the province, I'll go ahead, I, li I like technology stuff, I'll go ahead and learn Zoom all the way down, every feature of Zoom. Or I've seen some amazing presentations using Microsoft Publisher. There's so much in PowerPoints that are really, really interesting. And someone might say, I'll do that on behalf of the province. I'll, I'll learn really how to make these fantastic presentations on PowerPoint, and then I'll share that information with the province. Okay. So some of the things I went over already, um, in terms of sabbaticals that I want to, well, actually, were there questions on, the, on these? Any questions or comments on this? Yes, Ralph? It's sort of a sabbatical question. A question. I wonder if there's, uh, if the province ever puts together a list of sabbatical programs that are out there, you know, like Vatican II or the Franciscans and Santa Barbara, I don't know what's still out there now. Yeah. And maybe, maybe that, if, if people are contemplating taking a sabbatical, <coughs> they, if they can see, here's a sabbatical program, here's what, it, what it's about. You know, so. Yeah. Ralph is, Ralph is asking about, um, and this is for the benefit of the people at home also, uh, asking about a list of sabbatical programs that we know of. And we've had people participate in some, so we can get evaluative comments. There's three listed in here that we've had people participate in in the not too distant past at the, through the Jesuit school, their program, the Oblate program in San Antonio, and at CTU there's the Hesburgh program. Uh, sabbatical renewal program. But yes, we can really look at here also the ones that are available in Canada, which I'm not aware of, and, and g give that as a resource. A good question that you raise with that is if someone is interested in a sabbatical, you don't have to sit and plan that out all yourself. Again, the province, the, the, my prefecture or someone else in the province can sit down and help you explore the programs and look at the different components. Um, Brian and then John Paul. Just to respond to Ralph's question, unfortunately, the two programs that he mentioned no longer exist. The numbers uh, of people available to participate in these programs have gone down. So if we want to support them, we can maybe send someone. But I think the three listed are probably the, 
almost, not quite, but almost the three surviving programs here in the United States. And even when I did the sabbatical in Berkeley, there were two of us from the United States and one from Ireland and the rest, there were seven from Africa. There's just so few priests and religious of an age with the energy and ability to get away to do sabbaticals. So very few places available. Thank you, Brian. Brian. Jean-Paul? I would like to ask you the question about the specialization. When we see the people who belong to the province studying and the people coming and for studies, could we have some, uh, some line for this? Uh, making like uh, that we can know this person is studying for the congregation and this is the study for the province because we have some needs in our province mm -hmm. so this guy is studying for our needs and this other is studying for the congregation needs yes thank you yeah there is there is some discussion back and forth. You know, I did at one point contact uh, Matthew and say, are there certain areas, if we had people studying that from the congregational perspective, you would like to encourage? He kind of deferred to the province and said, well, you know, generate those. But if, if and when we get a plan together, we would give that to the general government. And they might say, you know what, we have a lot of people in that area. Would that person be interested in this other area? And, and, and kind of look at it from that perspective. And just to just to mention, uh, just a board program as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, Lucas is going to be starting his sabbatical in August. He'll be out for six months. Included in that six months, he's going to be looking at be participating in the forge. Um, but I'll, and I'll look at a couple things with sabbaticals in the next slide here to to spell that out a little bit more. So yeah, let's go ahead and move to that one. So the eligibility I mentioned. The length I mentioned, the program components, the, the three programs that I mentioned, those are five-month formal residential sabbatical programs where you're going to go there, you're going to be there for the five months. They include spiritual direction, oftentimes counseling, workshops and presentations, and then that gives you an additional month which then can be used for your four weeks of vacation for the year. So you may be in this program for five months, you take one month off for your vacation and then that's your six month sabbatical. But if you're not participating in one of those formal programs, so for example, Lucos will be doing vocation, some vacation time, he'll participate in the two and a half month forge program and then I think he's looking, we're still talking about doing perhaps some then workshops, conferences or independent study in the United States. Um, so we're piecing it together. You could also talk with Tony, who very recently had a sabbatical and, and pieced together different components. Might be visiting the Holy Land, things like that. So you try to put together a plan, um, a proposed budget, what pieces you'll be doing, and then submit that for proposal. You can be approved for a sabbatical without having every component defined completely, and then that can be, can be worked out. Um, as I said, but there is a form for an application for a sabbatical in this little, this little booklet, and, and when we finalize it, it's a, you'll be able to use. Any questions with that? Okay. So um, there was an online Google form some time ago that asked people, what areas do you think the province should be emphasizing? Where do you think people should be specializing? So some of these are listed up here, and they're also written on the dry erase boards off to, to my left. Okay. So, and these are in order of how many recommendations they got. So, and the percentages and numbers are in this handout that you have, social justice and spirituality, youth ministry, spiritual direction. Those had the most people, I, most of those over 50% of the respondents saying we need more people specializing in those areas. And these were religious areas. There were also then um, some secular areas, and these were, are also in order of how many people recommended them. Counseling, media communications, social work, business administration, 
These are all listed, as I said, in the paper that you have, along with the actual number of people who recommended out of the 49 respondents and the percentage that they received. Okay. So then there's the sabbatical in here. In your handout, what you'll see is hopefully we can present to the chapter a tentative filled out schedule for sabbaticals and for specializations. All right. But as, as part of the consultation and recommendation of the province, what we're going to do now is on the honor system, everybody can get three votes. So you can go over to the dry erase, take one of the markers, and put three checks wherever you want on the things you want to recommend. If you think journalism is really important, you can put three checks next to journalism, or you can spread up your checks and put them different places, um, two on one, one on another. So let's just take you know, five or 10 minutes, go ahead, walk up to the dry erase, grab a marker, and look over these categories. And it's, it's a way of a, visually then we can all see as a province, hey, it looks like these couple areas are really important to us, right? So I invite you to go ahead and move and take about 10 minutes to put your check marks. So there's computer, digital technology, migration, environment, off to the right. So, so look at this side and also that side. <laughs> We'll try to take another three minutes. Did you work, Sammy? Necesitas. Voluntaria.
You got too much to live there. I'm doing something. Oh, yeah, and then the again the reminder with this is this is for specializations. So this is for areas that we want people to gain more knowledge in. It's not a ranking of what ministry is more important or less important. Parish ministry is not up there because that's kind of a given, and certain other things can be important, but we might have that expertise in the province. So people shouldn't take it as a, again, as, as if something doesn't have a check mark, it means it's not important to us. That, and I'll just I'll snap a shot of this with my phone as a way of visually looking and seeing, oh, okay, these, these look important to us. So let me see. Yeah. Gives a nice visual image of some of the things that we think are, are important. And so then if you're someone who's been thinking of developing a specialization or have been interested in a graduate degree, you can look at those areas and you if it's like, wow, I really like that area and I can see that the province really thinks we need more people with that specialization, then that's a you might want to apply for that graduate degree. Look at your ministry, look at your life, and apply. With applications for graduate degrees, that's something else that you can be helped with. So if you're not sure what institution you want to attend, you want to ask help from the province and from the council to say, can you help me discern and look at things? We have a lot of experience within the province of a number of members who can, who can kind of help guide through that process. All right, before finishing up, this presentation, we'll just open it. Do you have any, any questions or other recommendations that should be part of a province multi-year plan for specializations and sabbaticals? All right, so that's good. And the, the, yes, glucose?
thank you for the, the, the outline. I think it is also good to have a, a, a personal experience. Like when we were uh, uh, in our formation, it was a must that we take, we call a regency. That means uh, in the middle of the studies, we went to the mission areas or where we have a ministries and then we were exposed to those kind of experiences. Even though we become priests, I think that's a, that's a kind of experience we, sh we sh it should be made available. Even maybe going to another, uh, another uh, uh, missions in a, another country or uh, uh, Africa or where our missionaries are there, and that will give uh, a kind of different perspective even if you are not involved with the same ministry. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lucas. Yeah, um, he reminded me of a point that should be considered in this uh, is at the level of initi initial formation, there's also a plan for specializations, that the formators are talking with the students who go, who go through initial formation to see if they're going to get an additional master's, if they're going to gain some expertise in a particular area. So also the, the formators can look at the list and the responses and, and see, okay, do we want to encourage particular areas? Great. Then I want to ask, and we're not going to do it now, you can take it with you, but um, there, we're going to hand out a paper that you can fill out. You can put your name, you can put if you're interested in a certain specialization, and you can list how you would like to pursue that specialization, whether through a degree, through certificate program, independent study. So take that with you, and you can do it later or do it during the course of the week. Bring it back and put it on the table over the front table over on the end. And I'll be able to collect those. And then hopefully those can be used to fill out those blank papers of, okay, here's, here's the specializations we're gonna look at. If you want to, in the future, explore using that form for requesting a sabbatical, the same thing. So that a year from now at the chapter, we will propose this to the chapter and it can have some, knowing that things do change and adjustments have to be made but that it can actually be spelled out. This is our long-term plan for specializations of the province. All right, thank you. At this point, I would ask if you not leave the room, you're welcome to stand and stretch for five minutes, and then we're going to have our prayer uh, for the sick and an anointing. Thank you.
Try to call y'all back. If you see anyone outside, call them back in and we'll have our, our prayer together. Let us pray. I don't know why chant does that, but it's interesting that it does. Good evening. On this day, as we celebrate the feast of the visitation of our Blessed Virgin Mary, let's keep our hearts open to receive God's healing power. Let us welcome Jesus, our healer, and Mother Mary into our hearts. The Lord called us to heal and comfort those who are ill, weak, and sorrowful. Sometimes we ourselves become wounded in our healing ministry. As we are preparing to celebrate the sacrament of anointing, let us participate wholeheartedly, acknowledging the need for our Redeemer, who alone can strengthen us and comfort us in our priestly ministry and religious consecration. Let us use our voice for kindness, our eyes and ears for compassion, our hands for charity, and our minds and truth, and our hearts for love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Dear brothers, as we are gathered here in the name of our Lord Jesus, who is present among us, 
Our Lord Jesus, who went about doing good works and healing, sickness and infirmity of every kind, commanded his disciples to care for the sick, to pray for them, and to lay hands on them. In this celebration, we shall entrust our sick brothers to the care of the Lord, asking that he will enable them to bear their pain and suffering in the knowledge that if they accept their share in the pain of his own passion, they will also receive his power and strength. Let us therefore commend our brothers who are sick and who need healing and reconciliation to the grace and power of Christ, that he may save them and raise them up. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Lord's forgiveness for his full of gentleness and compassion. By your paschal mystery, you have won for us salvation. Lord, have mercy. You renew among us now the wonders of your passion. Christ, have mercy. When we receive your body, you share with us your paschal sacrifice. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. All-powerful and ever-living God, your Son accepted our sufferings to teach us the virtue of patience in our illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers. We ask your loving help for our brothers who are sick. Restore their health, that they may again offer joyful thanks in your church. Through Christ our Lord. We listen to the gospel reading. Please stand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, Come to me all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Kindly be seated. This sacrament becomes more meaningful today to us because of the new situation we are at. When the sacrament of the anointing of the sick is given, the hope is that if it be God's will, the person be physically healed of illness. But even if there is no physical healing, the primary effect of the sacrament is a spiritual healing by which we all receive the Holy Spirit's gift of peace and consolation. As we journey through life, there are ups and downs. When we are knocked down, we need a pick-me-up. No matter what way you are knocked down, Jesus is there to pick you up. Especially when you are ill, we need Jesus to pick us up. And that is why the large part of church ministry is in health care and looking after those who are ill. We are well aware of those who have received miraculous physical healing in holy shrines at Lourdes and Fatima. They remind us that Jesus wishes to heal us today, just as he did during his earthly ministry. So the church Jesus continues to heal, taking those who are ill by the hand and saying, Talita Kom, I tell you to get up. Let us have faith in the healing power of Jesus and let Jesus, our master, take us by his hand when we need his help. It is a beautiful sacrament for healing and reconciliation. 
it is a sacrament for the sick. I have seen many people dramatically improve within hours or days after being anointed. I would see them in the church after anointing them in the hospital in very serious conditions. Every case is not as dramatic as that. But these instances remind us of the power of the sacrament to heal. And Jesus is waiting in the sacrament to pick us up after we have been knocked down by sickness and emotional hurts. It is not only sickness that can knock us down. We can be knocked down emotionally and psychologically. We can be knocked down by the hurts others inflict on us and by what they say or do to us. Abusive words and rejecting attitudes can also hurt us badly. On those occasions, we also need a pick-me-up. And on those occasions, Jesus is there to pick us up and heal us. Hear what Jesus is saying to you. Your wound is not permanent. It is only temporary. I am healing you. Let Jesus comfort you after the hurt you received. Let the love of Jesus replace all the damage and hurt and woundedness. Just as the Good Samaritan poured oil and wine on the wounds of the injured man on the road to Jericho, let Jesus pour his love on your wounds and replace your wounds with his love. Listen to Jesus who speaks to you. You are not dead, only asleep. Get up. Tell Jesus about your pain and hurt. Feel the love of Jesus, replacing your wounds with his love, healing you and making you whole again. As missionary disciples of Christ, we should long for the healing and comforting presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We should really desire the Spirit's presence, especially when you are weak or sick and emotionally hurt and wounded. At these vulnerable times of life, we should deeply yearn to receive God's gift of grace in the sacrament. Let's never fear to receive the Lord's sacrament. We encounter Christ every time when we receive sacraments. Let's ask for faith and true love in our hearts as we now approach to receive the sacrament. Intercessory prayers. You chose to be like us in all things in order to assure us of your compassion. You felt compassion for the crowd and went about doing good and healing the sick. Come and strengthen us through this holy anointing. We pray to the Lord. You commanded your apostles to lay their hands on the sick in your name. Free them from all harm, sins, and temptations. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray to God for our brothers and for all those who devote themselves to caring for them. We pray to the Lord. Bless our sick brothers. We ask for our prayers and fill them with new hope and strength. Sustain all the sick with your power. We pray to the Lord. Give life and health to our brothers on whom we lay our hands in your name. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray. God of comfort and consolation, you sent your Son into the world to bear our infirmities and endure our sufferings. For your servants who are sick and need your healing, we ask that your blessing will give them strength 
to overcome their weakness through the power of patience and the comfort of hope, and that, with your aid, they will soon be restored to health. Praise to you, God, the Almighty Father. You sent your Son to live among us and bring us salvation. Blessed be God, who heals in Christ. Praise to you, God, the only begotten Son. You humbled yourself to share in our humanity and to heal our infirmities. Blessed be God, who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Your unfailing power gives us strength in our bodily weakness. Blessed be God. God of mercy, ease the suffering and comfort the weakness of your servants whom the church anoints with this holy oil. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So Father Ralph and I will be doing the anointing. Those who I wish that everybody participates and we'll the, on the two aisles will be present. I will be here. Father Ralph will be on that side. So you come forward. If you are not able to come, we will come to you.
Let's recite together the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven. Let us pray. Father in heaven, through this holy anointing, grant comfort in their suffering. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, offer them hope. And when alone, assure them the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Peace be with you. After dinner, we'll be back here for a prayer remembering uh, Michelle Correa and Alberto Domingo, praying for all of our brothers who have died. A suggestion for, for dinner, you know, given our situation, is it might be good to, I, there are enough tables to have an empty seat between us while we're eating at meals. Or at least if that's not the case, for you to be very sure that the person you're sitting next to is comfortable with that, you know, that, that we be sensitive to people's spaces. Also, our socials for the rest of the week will be in the living room of the residence hall. They won't be in the dining hall. They'll be in that first floor living room of the residence hall. So um, enjoy your dinner. We'll see you back here after dinner for our prayer, and then we'll be free for our social.